Ramza. Yes, teacher. Are you ready? Yes, teacher. We are back. Must say you are sharing a number. I don't understand why you are sharing this number. <laughs> Okay, one well, look at this approach. It's not common in our books. Not find it in any books you have. It is not there in back house, not there in the understanding pure. It's not there in, very, in most of your books, but the name asks questions on it. There's very, very few books which are not so common. Eh? So we want to get this method. I want to be so slow so that you can get it properly once for all. So they give you a polynomial and they say give you this polynomial. Find the remainder using synthetic approach. You voice that in English, there is the question. Eh? So if they give you a polynomial, given polynomial. Given polynomial. Polynomial. Polynomial x cube plus 3x squared minus 4x plus 2. Find the remainder. Find the remainder. We're divided. We're divided by. I x minus one <coughs> using the static approach or method. If I give you such a question and you add that one, even for another blah blah blah, find the remainder divided by that using the static approach. Eh? So what we do is we draw a table and put begin with the highest power of the polynomial given. So we have x power three, we have x squared, we have x, and we have x power zero. Then we write the coefficients on those figures in the equation below them. So here we have one, so we have three. We have negative four, we have two. Then draw a line. So we are going to equate our x minus one to zero. And what we shall get is known as the multiplier. We shall put a zero here. Why do we put a zero? Because we are going to divide this polynomial by x. So we don't expect to get another x cubed. x cubed will have a zero coefficient. Eh? Zero, yeah, the first one. Now we add this to zero and have one. Eh? So one times one, what is now multiply? Get one, so you put it here. And add. Excuse yeah. me, teacher. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. You are lost. Eh? Yes. First, write, begin with the highest power 
over the point of view. Hmm? It was x cubed. So write in descending until you reach x power zero. I think that's okay. Hmm? Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. Then after that, write the square fishes. This is the one here saying what? Write them below. Those variables, eh? Is that okay? Yes, teacher. Then after that, now put a zero here. Why? I told you why is zero. We are dividing this polynomial x cubed with x. So we don't expect you again to get another x cubed. The highest we shall get will be x what? Square. Eh? Are you getting me? Yes, teacher. So we put a zero here because we don't have an x cubed anymore. Hmm? Then you add this one plus the zero, and you get this one here. Hmm? Now you multiply one with that multiplier, we got by equating the divisor to zero. We have one. Huh? So multiply one with this. One times one, you get what? One. Then you put it here. Huh? And again, three plus one. Four. Then you multiply by one. Yes? You get four. Four, you put it four here. And you have zero times zero. Zero. You put it here. Then add. That what? So this is yes. you put in live and see. Put one live. Do the way you You have one plus three minus four plus two. You have these two, these are going, and the answer will make what? So this is what they call the vertical half cross. Right? Is it okay or I repeat? We will try another example and we we'll see how whether we shall be there. So the measure here. It shall first repeat. Okay, I'm going to repeat, daughter. Thank you. Now I'm saying, and I want to be very slow. But when they give me a polynomial, and the examiner says, find the remainder using synthetic approach. First, look at the highest power of your polynomial. Here it was x cubed. That's what you begin with. Start begin with x cubed and write in descending powers until I reach zero. I have x cubed, then I fold by x squared, fold by x power one, then find an x power zero. Now below, Write the coefficients which are behind those variables. Just adjust it to them. Here I have a one, I have a three, I have a negative four, I have a two. Is that okay? Then here I put a zero, and I don't know why I don't put zero. I'm going to divide this polynomial with x. So I don't expect another x what? Square. Eh? There, here I put a zero together for that new position after, after dividing. Eh? Now, when I put it there, I add the coefficient which was behind x cubed with zero, and I will get one. Then I equate the divisor here to zero and find the value of x. Eh? That the value of x I've got is known as a multiplier. And now here, multiplier is one. So now I multiply one with what I've got after adding these two. One times one, I get one. So I put it here in the next position. Then I add the two. Look, I did it be one. Huh? Oh, nothing. Three plus one, I get four. One by four is the multiplier. I get four. Huh? I add the two, I get zero. Zero times the multiplier, I get zero. Two plus zero to the last thing I get is the remainder. Is it okay now? Hello. 
Yes, teacher. Uh -huh. Now, what, then what next? Now, where is the quotient? The quotient, you put this one there. So the quotient will be now, will be now one times x squared, which is x squared, four times x, which is four x, and zero times anything. And so this is the question. Even if you say, let me try it using long words, long words will be a kind of that in the quotient. Have x minus one, have x cubed plus three x squared minus four x plus two. So when you put here x squared, I have x cubed minus x squared. You say I'm telling you have four x squared minus four x. So we have here plus four x. So four x squared minus four x. So I'm telling you have to so here this one. So the remainder is two. And the quotient up in that. So you can even get a quotient here by drawing those arrows in that manner. You can spread down the remainder and even the quotient. Without necessarily doing long what? Long division. Let us look at another example. Are you through? Hello? I found a rag of yes. I found a rag of no. Yes, teacher. You are through. Yes. Find the main thing. Let's get after. Find the main. With the synthetic approach when the polynomial 4x cubed plus 6x squared plus 3x plus 2 is divided by 2x plus 3. Find the remainder in the synthetic approach when the polynomial blah 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 is divided by this. And write down the portion. Okay? So just do the table. Do the table. Have x cubed. Have x squared. Have x power one and have x power zero. So you have a four, you have a six, you have a three, you have a two. Then you draw another line. And then you shall put here zero. Then our multiplier is x is equal to negative three over two. Is the multiplier. Multiply. So you shall have here four. Four times negative three over two. We have negative six. Is it? Is it so? Negative six when you add, you shall have zero. Zero times our negative three over two, you shall have a zero. You shall have three. Three times negative three over two, you have negative nine over two. And when we add this, we shall we get two minus nine over two. Minus five. So this is our main. Can you prove it by direct submission to see whether the answer is the same?
I think we are right. I must check and see. Then the question is now, we have this, we have that, we have that. So our question x is 4x squared, then this is 0x, then prime x. So our question will be that, and our remainder will be this. So we can use our synthetic approach, write down the quotient. So we can write down the quotient. Very interesting. Very good answer. Very good answer. Really, a kind of one of the best. I threw. I threw. If you are through, can you try this question? It's around five minutes. Yeah? Find the remainder when the polynomial four x cube minus five x plus four is divided by two x minus one using synthetic approach. Find the remainder and the quotient when this polynomial is divided by that using synthetic approach. I threw. Yes. And I mean, what has remained? Two. And uh, I've got a two. And then the questions? Questions? What is your question, my son? 
2x squared plus 2x minus 4. 4x squared plus 2x minus 4. Yes. We are agree with him, the rest of the participants. Yes. Yes, teacher. So this is what they call synthetic approach. Very easy, right? Don't let the time do it. Don't very hard at the time, see? You guys don't know what to do. So for those who may be stuck and they don't want to say of oh, fail, okay. so write down our x cubed, x squared, x, x power zero. We shall have here four, we have here zero, we have here negative five, we have here four. Then you can say now we are zero. Now a multiplier. Multiplier. With the x is equal to a half. We shall say four times a half, we have a two. Zero plus three is a two. Two times a half, we we'll have a one. Negative four, negative four times a half, we we'll have negative two. So we have here four is two. The main two. And now our question has been question giving us our four x squared plus two x minus four. This is our question that we should have made. So thank you very much, my time for understanding the approach. Eh? Is there anybody who is still bad luck? He doesn't know what you're doing. You ask and you help you. So you will not find this one in your textbook. You will not even find it in the school you are going to join. It's not a very common method you never ask. That year when they asked this question, nobody in the whole country got this right. Huh? Because they were not taught. Huh? So pathetic approach is not a very common thing. And then there are common books. But you never ask. I say you want to ask a question? Then you unmute and no. you okay? Yes, I'm okay. Okay. So that's what I could give you if you don't have any problem. That's what we have for our polynomial, and I want to say that topic is cloud. What you shall be remaining with is just meeting the numbers and solve them and consult. But for you to have a chance that when you go to school, the teacher will again repeat this. So you will be at a better position than your colleagues who have not had a chance to look at this thing before. You keep practicing because when you don't practice, you forget. Now, our next topic, I want to ask you about trigonometry. But uh, we, uh, you see, we need some back in first. So we shall, we shall look at. I look at it. I just look at permutation and combination. That is another table topic. If you are not yet to that, we shall go straight to see it. And we look at uh, arithmetic progression and geometric progression. So our next topic will be series, but I can see time is running out. Yeah. We have how many minutes left? I have only two minutes left, so two minutes. I think we shall look at it next time. I have only two minutes to go for another lesson. So, how do you guys get to the exercise? If you are going to give us which exercise, I give you the exercise. You don't have an exercise here. What I can I tell you to do is can you use number? Exercise 9H. Exercise 9H. Exercise 9H. And use number one and number two. Exercise 9H. You already have it in your books. Eh? Exercise 9H. Number one and number two. So 
use the synthetic what? Pick some numbers there and try them using synthetic approach. And so that we are getting the answer which they are giving in the book. Huh? There it will be okay and you know that it has entered and it will never go out of your head. Huh? So, my dear daughters and sons, you, you chose math to be your career. As I told you earlier, math is so demanding, as you have seen. There's a lot to be done. It really encroaches on all of your time. So when you're doing math, any time, other than it, having a lesson in that other particular subject, is the time for math. Can you try to do the exercises we give you? And by the time they hand another topic, you are through with those exercises. Okay? Don't accumulate work. Postponed. I'm going to do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. You may not do it and it will explode with you. So I want to urge you to keep trying the exercise they give you on time. And consult where you've got stuck. Check whether the answer of what is the one which is in the book. I'm assuring you, the sky will be the limit. By the time you come to school and begin S5, you find math very interesting because you already have an upper hand. But here you reap what you so I told you our three motors and the one governing mathematics. The first one, never ever give up. You choose math, numbers become hard. Never ever give up because they're not supposed to be very easy. Anyway. And people have been doing them and have been excited. To work extra hard, do the work they have given you on south. When you do that, you're not going to go wrong. And finally, you reap what you have sown. If you put in enough effort, you find things better. If you don't put in effort, you are going to languish and you not manage. Eh? Remember, a level math is not compulsory. You choose when you want it. So when you feel you want to do mathematics, please love it. And give it time. I hope you know what you want. Don't mess up with your future. The earlier, the better. So finally, Get back was one. Get a question bank on your name. Question bank is about nine or ten thousand. On that, you work, it work as a, not work as a house, a communication house at the best. Neighbor has a shop there. You sell them at a cheaper price. Go there and buy mathematical tables and buy even the question bank. Then, if you want, you can again buy pamphlets which are trying to answer questions with name, but I would desist you from reading them as not. If you sit down and read the solution from the question bank, you're going to fail. From what? From the pamphlets eh? written by very many people. The only way you can use that pamphlet and the benefit is when you buy it, buy also the, the question bank of your name. So you try the number and open those solutions to see whether your answer is correct. They will benefit. But if you sit down and read those solutions in that book, you will not understand and you will fail. So I want to encourage you. If you want to buy it, buy it, but don't read it. Do not just solve and check whether the answer you have got is correct. There will be advising and it will help you. But if you read the solution, ah, you're digging your small grave and wait for disaster. I've been teaching math for the last 30 something years. I know what I'm talking about. I've been examining the UNEP since 1998 up to date. I'm a senior examiner in UNEP. I know what I'm telling you. So it is not from imagination, but these are realities. And many of our people have failed because of that. They just read the solutions. They cannot think. Huh? So please, choose math. It is a necessary evil. Be prepared. Do your best. Thank you very much for attending. Shall keep helping you and guiding you. And I hope the sky is the limit. Okay, bye bye. We're going to prepare for another lesson. I wish you all the best of the weekend. Enjoy as you solve numbers. Huh? Anything you want to tell me? Hello. Thank you. Uh -huh. you need
the calculator, you need the books more. Tell your friends to squeeze the money. I know it will be any COVID, there is no money. Many of them squeeze and get your mathematical calculator 991, and then you also get your HUB and the back. Yes. I told you, if you are really hard, is at around the Cairo Bank. There are some there who sell all the books at a cheaper price. They are stored in the so they are. You can buy an old one at a cheaper price, but have a textbook. So all the best. Meet on Monday, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Next up, it is a arithmetic progression and GP and AP.